Good afternoon and welcome back to the Return Homestead. We are still working in the laundry room today. Today we're going to start in on mudding the drywall. So we're going to go over the basics of how to apply mud to the wall, how to get the seams taped up. started here with the screws. You want to make sure that those screws are well set inside of the drywall. We don't want to tear the paper on the drywall, but we want to make sure the screw is far enough inset in the wall that our knife doesn't catch on it when we're running mud across it. So we just take a nice flat metal tool, run it over the screws, and we're looking for anything that clicks or pops like that when we run across it. Just want to make sure it's seated well enough in there that the knife won't get stuck on it. continue around the room checking each one of these screws, make sure they get set well enough in the drywall, and then we'll grab the mud and get busy. Now with all the screws set properly inside the drywall, it's time to get to the mud. Come on over and have a look at this stuff. So this is uh, about three quarters of a tub of mud that we used in Marty's art studio. And you'll see that uh, this stuff's gotten really thick and firm. If I try spreading this on the wall, we're just going to end up with a goopy mess. And this is true of any mud that you just bought at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's probably going to be a little dehydrated. It's a good idea to get some water back into this before you try spreading it on the wall. Whenever you're working with drywall mud, make sure you've got a bucket of water set aside and also have plenty of towels on hand. This is probably the fastest way to get additional water into your mud. All I need to do now is mix the mud and the water together and the mud will rehydrate itself. So with the mud all mixed, all we need now are the knives and tools that we need to deal with it. Uh, we've got a corner trowel to allow us to set the tape easily into the corners. This allows you to hit both sides of the corner at the same time. Regular uh, nine inch knife for doing the tape on the seams. It's always handy to have a good scoop for your mud. Those scoops are designed to go inside of a five gallon bucket. So it makes it real easy to get the mud out. And you'll need tape. Got a 250 foot roll of tape. A nice clean edge on it. It's always a pain to have to bend over and spool off additional tape. So I like to just go ahead and roll a bunch out so that it's loose from the roll and easy to pick up and work with. I'm sure you'll find a lot of drywall videos online that will explain this whole process to you in a much more professional way. You'll see guys using fancy machines that apply the tape. Uh, some people who can do this almost in one motion. I'm not a drywallologist. This takes a little bit of effort for me to be able to get the mud on the wall, get the tape lined up and make sure I'm comfortable with the way it's set in the mud. So I'm going to show you the simplest and basic ways that I've discovered for making this work out. Need a tray, scoop up a good bit of mud in it. Mud is always easier to spread if it's worked. The 
if your mud's starting to get a little too tight in the tray, you might add a little extra water or just mix it around a little bit. Kind of like making a mud pie. You want to keep this stuff mixed up. And then to apply it to the wall, you just pull off a small bit. And that's just to cover one of the screw holes. The first time through, you're not trying to get a perfect job here. We're just trying to cover that hole where the screw was and get it relatively smoothed out. I'll oftentimes feather the edges by pressing on one edge of the knife because the less sanding I have to do, the better. Keep everything nice and loose. So getting the mud on the wall is not that hard. Just pick it up with the knife, spread it on. Now you don't want to leave it like that because that's uh, about an hour worth of sanding to knock all that extra mud off. So you just come back in a different direction, smooth it out a little bit. It's going to be a lot easier to sand that way. One of the ways I've discovered for hiding these marks that you're going to put texture over later is to try to alter the direction that you're moving the mud. So if you put it on left to right once, do it top to bottom the next time. Pretty simple to scrub, cover the screw holes. Get the tape on it. Taping the seam is a little bit different. You want to get plenty of mud on the wall. Give the uh, tape something to set into. just to even it out. Try to make sure we don't have any air bubbles underneath the tape. Just start our tape down here in the corner. it into the mud as we go. When you get to the end, you use your knife to just go ahead and tear the tape. You don't want to press too hard. You're not trying to move the tape on the wall. You just want to push it into the mud. Like the feather the edges to make it easier to sand later. Corners are a kind of a difficult problem for most people spreading drywall. The biggest reason is that they'll try to set the tape using a standard knife. Now we're going to fold the tape and stick it into the corner. Now if I put my knife here and press in, the edge of the knife is pushing into the opposite wall. So we're going to end up with a line running down that wall. Then if I go back to smooth out the line, I end up putting a line in the other side. The simplest solution that I found is to use a corner trowel. Because of the design of the corner trowel, it allows you to squeeze in and get both sides of the wall at one time. So with one smooth motion, you can do both sides of the wall, have it all set into the mud and ready to go. So first thing is just like on the other seams, you want to get plenty of mud onto the wall for the tape to set in. I know most people will try to do the entire corner all at once and you do get a much more consistent finish. I find it difficult to work with that much tape so I usually only do half the wall at a time or half the corner at a time. So 
I'm only going to push. I'm only going to spread mud down to where that seam is. I want to make sure that the entire corner is filled with mud and that we don't have any air bubbles that are going to be sitting up behind the tape. Go ahead and measure off a piece of tape that I need. Just tear that to length. And there's already a crease in this tape, so all you're doing is just following the crease down the center of the tape. Get it folded. And stick it into the corner. Try to get the folded section all the way into the corner. I'm just pressing out lightly with my fingers just to kind of get it stuck in the mud. And then with the corner trowel, just make one smooth pass straight down the corner. Well, and this happens occasionally where you end up disturbing the tape on another seam. If you do that, just put a little more mud on it. Press the tape back in where you want it. And you see we've got a good clean edge on our tape. Everything's pressed evenly into the mud on both sides. So I'm just going to do a little clean up. Tape set in that corner, it's ready to go. So this is what will happen if a screw is not set in all the way. When you run your knife across, it bounces out. You're going to end up with a ridge. You'll be able to see the head of the screw sticking out. So that tells you you need to grab your drill and set that screw a little tight. Let's check that and see if we got it set now. Still a little bit of a bump. bit better. I need to sand this area down and then on the level two where we're actually trying to smooth this out uh, we'll be able to get that little bump out of there. And after just a little bit of work, the entire room is taped and mudded. At least our level one. So drywall taping and mudding is done in multiple steps. You don't try to get to perfection on step one. This is just a level one. Really just taping the seams, getting the tape set firmly into the mud and allowing that uh, time to dry. I also want to cover all the screw holes but there are slight imperfections in the mud right now. And that's okay, we're gonna come back and sand off some of those imperfections and 
Then we'll put on another layer of mud. Let it dry and come back and sand it off. That'll be our level two. And that's usually where Marty and I draw the line. We get tired of mudding and we'll typically go ahead and put texture on at that point. But technically a level three would use a larger knife and feather things out even further. Getting nice, smooth, even edges. And then you might put a texture on or even go for a level four, which would be a completely smooth and flat wall. We like using texture because areas like this can be really difficult to work with. Now my mud was a little bit loose. It had a little too much water in it and that made areas like this difficult to work in. But I'll go ahead and let that dry as is, uh, then hit it with a sander and then work on smoothing out all those bumps. There's always little imperfections in the wall when you're done. Just keep in mind, this is level one. You still get to come back with a sander and apply some more mud later. Don't try to do it all in one step. Probably one of the most annoying parts about taping and mudding is the cleanup. When you're done, you gotta wash all this mud off of everything. You may even, if you're doing a large room, have to clean your tools several times while you're doing this. So make sure you've got a bucket of water handy and be ready to uh, take a few minutes to clean things off. But the cleanup's not all that exciting, so we'll probably go ahead and cut the video here. We do still need to do a level two and a level three. We'll be adding texture and all of that before we get ready to paint. Please do subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss any further videos on the drywall. We'd appreciate it if you hit that like button while you're in there. We'll see you next time.